on Channel 4 now, the last programme from Granada in the 60s. World in Action. for a general election, the aftermath of the George Brown affair, the world money crisis, and to begin, the latest news in detail from Martin Munkester. The Washington talks will be resumed in two hours' time. Our correspondent in Washington says the message reaching there from half the capitals of Europe is the same, that the central bankers can only buy time, and that if the United States is to win the gold and dollar battle, she must cut government spending on Vietnam. Sunday, March the 17th, London. These people believe world politics are in a mess. For them, the gold rush and its consequences, the resignation of George Brown and American policy in Vietnam are all symptoms of that mess. A number of these people are students who call themselves the new radical left. They are determined and believe their most effective weapon is mass action and even violence. A number of others believe in the cause but are less certain about the method. All want to bring about a radical social and political change, and they're no longer prepared to sit down and sing for it. They claim to be part of a worldwide rebellion of youth spreading from the United States to communist Europe. Today, in the House of Commons, charges of brutality were made against both police and demonstrators. Tonight, World in Action allows you to judge for yourself the demonstration. Now, to get your bearings, stand with your back to the wall. This area, laid out by 1843, was named Trafalgar Square in honor of Admiral Lord Nelson. Dominating the square is Nelson's cock. It is 170 feet, two inches high. The lions were designed by Sir Edwin Landseer. Trafalgar Square is a traditional home of free speech. 11 o'clock Sunday morning, the motorway from the north to London. 150 Manchester students in four buses are on their way to take advantage of the Trafalgar Square tradition. These are some of the things we ought to remember. The demonstration has got to be kept together all the time. The police are going to try and split it up, going to try and break it up, going to try and provoke us. So we have to stick together all the time, and all the Manchester delegation has to stick together. We have to have someone who's responsible for anyone who gets arrested. We have to have someone to look after the girls. So. What we have to do is, is keep everyone together and follow the stewards and not allow ourselves to be broken up. If they start using the horses, if they start trying to break up the, the demonstration by charging into us, just link arms with the person next to you. It doesn't matter who it is, whether you know them or not. Just grab his arms and link arms together and form a solid bunch. If you are not critical of the society, and if you don't play some sort of role in trying to change that society, then you've probably foregone some of your rights as a member of that society. I think everybody, it's the duty of all of us at the moment to try and avoid the sort of situation that came about in the 1930s. And I think that we're going through recurring crises in the world at the moment, whether it's on the, the gold standard or whether it's in Vietnam. It's the duty for those of us who feel strongly about it to get out and try and change it. Well, Martin Luther King has said that a riot is the voice of the unheard. I don't think this is entirely true, but to some extent it is. We, a lot of us voted and worked for the Labour Party in 1964 and 1966 in the thoughts that it would be something of a radical party. In fact, it has completely foregone any pretensions it had to radicalism. And for me, the, the demonstration is really a, a strengthening of my muscles for the sort of society I want to see later. For too long, too many of us have been contented to sit back and let the government do it for us and then be upset when they don't, when they change their policies completely. So I think that the time has come for all, all of us, and, or at least for many of us who feel like me, to in fact unite and to try and bring about a radical social change. And if violence is a part of this, then violence is a part of it. I shan't be at all surprised if there's violence today. Um, and I shan't be, um, how shall I put this? I shan't, I shan't be condemnatory of it. I think that the state generally is allowed to push anybody and everybody about as much as it wants to, and that people are starting to fight back, and this is a good sign. It's 
rather a larger demonstration than we normally anticipate on Trafalgar Square. It's a little complicated by the fact that the marchers want to march to Speaker's Corner and in doing so go past the American Embassy in uh, Grosvenor Square. This causes us um, uh, some difficulty, some problems which we have to overcome. It means we've got to take slightly larger precautions than what we normally do in order to protect any embassy or legation that we're, uh, we, ha we have as a host country to protect. A thousand London policemen will be on crowd control duty. Some will be on horseback. Some will get hurt and hit back. Some will only lose their helmets. Their preparation has been detailed and thorough. This morning they stopped buses from the north and searched them for offensive weapons. They found marbles, pepper and artificial blood. Eleven fifteen Sunday morning. English and American students of the Stop It Committee were rolling off leaflets and getting together banners for distribution to members at the demonstration. will take a sort of a woolly position of yes it would be nice that the Americans would get out of Vietnam, yes it would be very nice that this country were, a, were an equitable society, but they don't take the political implications of these, these uh, decisions that they've made. Two o'clock, Trafalgar Square. 10,000 committed demonstrators, several hundred uncommitted spectators, and scores of Viet Cong flags. I support the ending of the war in Vietnam, any sensible person does. What's this the main is purely thing? as an individual, not as a bus inspector. All demonstrations do some good. Demonstrations are protest. What do you think of it as a bus inspector, the demonstration? As a bus inspector, it's a bloody nuisance. We, we came up the West End, we just come to have a look, to, to have a look, see what's going on. What's it all about? Vietnam again, as about? Yeah. Well, I just hope the peace will come for everybody. And dozens of people from the world's press and newsreels, among them American radio commentator Jerry Landy. <laughs> Apparently weary of non-violence and love power and the potency of flower power too, thousands of young Britons found a new outlet for their frustrations today, direct action. Pardon me, I'm Jerry Landay of the Westinghouse Broadcasting Company in the United States, and I wondered if I could ask you, uh, why do you think the Vietnam issue is important? Because the Vietnamese people are fighting for freedom and liberty, have been fighting for nearly 30 years, and they fought against the Japanese and against the French, and now they're fighting against the Americans for this one great principle. As Ho Chi Minh put it, nothing is greater than independence and freedom. By the thousands, they flocked to Trafalgar Square looking for something to hate. The ostensible magnet for their hostilities with a rally of solidarity for Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Cong, 
and against the United States in the Vietnamese War. LBJ, hold the line. LBJ, hold the line. Move, move, Grosvenor Square, the American Embassy. Scene of a counter demonstration. While Trafalgar Square speakers warmed up the marchers for their assault on the embassy, a rival pro American faction, the Monday Club, took up defensive positions outside it. Thank you. We'll be showing the flag, we'll be showing that these are a few people who cared to come here on a Sunday afternoon at some inconvenience to themselves just to show that unlike this highly um, organized radical demonstration that's being brought along, we can behave in a civilized way. Um, clearly, we're not going in for any sort of violence. We don't know what these other people are going to do. We're just going to show that there are a few of us making a token gesture. That's all we're trying to do. We are here to express our solidarity with the guerrillas of the National Liberation Front. There he is, there he is. Violence in the streets of London, no. Uh, law and order must be maintained. I think everyone in the Monday Club would certainly agree with that, and I'm sure that most British people would. In taking part in this demonstration of solidarity with the Vietnamese people, North, South, partisans, soldiers, villagers and townspeople who are fighting to, de to liberate their country, I know that I am both supporting their struggle and supporting what is best in America. I mean, they, they had their student pranks, they put chamber pots on tops of towers and that sort of thing. It was all good fun. Uh, but all, all, all this has changed. This demonstration is an expression that there is a British point of view which believes it's worthwhile fighting for freedom. Yeah. Yeah. That, that point of view is expressed by the Monday Club and by the Conservative Party. Yeah. The economic crisis which faces this country and America has its roots directly in this mad and suicidal war in Vietnam. Every penny lost on the wage freeze, every penny paid in rent is a payment to the war machine in Vietnam. That and nothing else. Why are the moneylenders able to charge 10 and 12 percent interest rates? 345 at St. Paul's. Canon Collins leads a different sort of protest against the war. As Vietnamese governments, a failure to recognize that the National Liberation Front is, or certainly was, a nationalist movement. America increases daily the likely success of Ho Chi Minh, the likely success of a communist revolution. Socialist students from West Berlin came to London today because they feel that there is an urgent need for international cooperation in the fight against imperialism in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and in Europe at home. Get out of Vietnam. They have no business being in Vietnam because they don't belong there. This is how Jerry Landy reported for America. They railed against the Wilson government, against devaluation, against higher prices, against unemployment, against the wage freeze, in short, against the whole sea of British troubles. I asked some of the demonstrators what that all had to do with America and Vietnam. What do you mean, one shouted hoarsely, it's America's done everything. That was the best answer I could get. Three forty-five. Fifteen thousand people begin their march on the American Embassy. Their intention is to demonstrate and hand in an official note of protest about the war. They are determined the police will not stop them. Sunday that the cordon will be broken.
520 Grosvenor Square. The riot you will see is the most violent London can remember.
riot lasted just over an hour. Police casualties were 117 injured. The demonstrators carried off their wounded uncounted. 13 embassy windows were broken, but the demonstrators didn't get inside. And Jerry Landy sent this dispatch to America. These youthful militants have not organized with such fervor, nor turned out in such numbers on behalf of stronger governmental leadership. They've not marched on the Home Office on behalf of fair treatment for the dispossessed Asians of Kenya, have not staged massive protests against the Rhodesian hangings. The tragedy is they find it less painful to attack directly the failings of a foreign society than the failings of their own. And in this perennial human tendency to find a scapegoat, they are not so very different from the old folks they spend so much time in tearing to shreds. Jerry Landay, London. The point is that the only section of society at the moment that seems to me to be willing to stand up and be counted, and the only one that has not sold out on its political obligations, if you like, are the students. And you're twinging people's consciences when you're reminding them what's going on continually, all the time. When they no longer will fight through their trades unions or through their Labour Party, when there's a huge amount of political apathy, then of course people are going to be worried and annoyed about student hooliganism. And it's very much easier for them to believe that than to ask themselves why we're doing it, to try and understand our motives and to try and listen to what we're saying. And that's your alternative Hogmanay on Channel 4. Oh, <laughs> Is that all right? Well, if you're staying in tomorrow evening, you certainly couldn't do better than seeing in the new year with Channel 4. Time now, I suppose, to start compiling a list of resolutions, as we're only five minutes away from the last day of 1985. Well, I can't think of any. Perhaps we ought to sleep on it. From me, David Vickery, have a peaceful night. Good night.